Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And I am here today with a cute, quick and easy tag note card set that is going to feature some products from the latest not too shabby box of the month. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to make and get some tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Previously on my YouTube channel, I have created little sets of note cards and envelopes that go inside these plastic crayon boxes. You can usually find these at an office supply store, or I even got mine at the Dollar Tree. This first set was just plain pattern paper on the front with matching envelopes. And for the second set, I actually showed you how you could quickly and easily create a set using not too shabby ephemera. Not only to make the cards and envelopes inside, the envelopes are their pattern paper, but also to decorate the front. Now I will have both of these videos linked in that description box below if you want to check them out. Today, I thought I would make another set, but instead of like a standard card shape, I'm going to go with more of a tag shape. So these would be great for putting on gifts or maybe slipping a little gift card inside for the holidays. This video is kind of inspired by my friend Danny, who is also on the Not Too Shabby team. Last month, she did a month of tags and it was so inspiring. I wanted to give my own a try, but do a little twist. I will link the hashtag for her videos in the description box below if you want to go check out her videos and get inspired. For my cards and envelopes today, I'm going to be using the Fonz in Winter Paper Pad. For my envelopes, I chose this pattern, kind of a fun kind of geometric with that has a glitter on the back. And the fun thing is when your papers are double sided for those envelopes, then you can see both patterns. I'm also going to be doing a little decorating with pattern paper on my tag front and I thought this kind of sweater looking knit background made them look nice and cozy because I am going to be using the Snuggle Weather stamp set from this box of the month. I like all the cute little animals in their sweaters. My plan is to also add just a little bit of ink blending kind of to help create a scene. So I got out the Knit Diamonds background stencil, which I designed for Not Too Shabby, I believe, last year. I just thought it also kind of had a knit sweater kind of pattern. Now, if you haven't yet got your hands on a box of the month, I know that they're going to go super fast, so I have a link in that description box below. Now, not only can you save a little on the overall retail value, but if you sign up for monthly, which guarantees that you get a box each month, you also save an additional 5%. Make sure to check out that link. And also, while you're there, I have a coupon code that is good for most non-kit items in the shop, so you can stock up on some of your other favorite goodies as well. Maybe a little Christmas present to yourself. As I add more products and tools throughout the video, I will let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to stamp my images and I will be using the bear, the fox, the deer, and the bunny from the stamp set. And I'm stamping these onto a piece of Nina Solar White with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I did have a piece large enough so they would all fit and there would be space around them to cut them out later with my brother Scan and Cut. Now these are new stamps, so I wiped off those manufacturing oils with my fingers before I inked it up and stamped it. Now my ink pad is pretty dry, so to get a nice solid black this first time around with these images, I did ink it up and stamp it three times. I just love these little animals and their sweaters. I think my favorite is probably the bear. Let me know in the comment section which of these four images is your favorite. 
Now that I had nice solid images, I took these off screen and colored them with my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers. I will list each of the individual colors below. Also, while I was doing that, I cut these out with my brother Scan and Cut. It is such a handy tool for stamps like this. Now let's do some cutting. I'm going to start by cutting down the four pattern papers I want to use for my envelopes. Today these are going to be five and a quarter inch squares after they're cut down. I did save the scraps on the side to use for a future project. Then with the cable knit piece of paper, I'm going to have this be just a little bit of decoration on the tag. I cut this into a piece that was two and a half inches wide and then I cut four strips that were one half inch tall. This first piece of white cardstock is going to end up being our folded cards. So I'm going to cut this to two and a half inches wide by seven inches tall. So then when you fold them down, you have a final card of two and a half by three and a half. Once those were all cut down, I brought in a final piece of white cardstock and I cut it to four pieces that are two and a half by three and a half. These are going to be the tags that I actually decorate and you will see later I do cut them down just a little bit. Now for the cards, you could definitely just go ahead and fold these by hand, but I did go ahead and bring in my score bud mini sorry, my score buddy, and I'm going to put a score line at three and a half inches, and then I'm going to go and fold those and just reinforce that fold with the bone folder. This next handy little board is the We Are Memory Keepers tag punch board, and this is how I'm going to get the angles in the top of my tags. Now the first ones I tried were the folded ones, and it ended up being just a little bit too thick because of those two layers. So once I had one tag cut out, I just used that along with a pair of scissors to cut the rest of my small cards. Now when it came time to do the tags that I'm going to actually decorate, the single layer ones, I did go ahead and use the punch board. If you do have one of these and you're following along, I lined the top of my tag up with line F. Now I know that I'm throwing out a lot of dimensions here in this video. I will make sure as well to have these down in the description box. To make my envelopes, I will be using another product from We Are Memory Keepers. This is the envelope punch board. Now in my other videos that I mentioned earlier, I go into more detail about how to use this, but I am going to let you see the process for one envelope, but don't forget I will have the dimensions and the first punch, which is three inches for this, all listed down below. Let me know if you own an envelope punch board and if you've ever actually used it. I know sometimes we buy those tools and then we never get them out. My next step is to decorate the single layer tags that we cut and I will be doing some stenciling. Once again, I'm using the Knit Diamond Stencil along with a blue ink. Off camera, I tore a strip of masking paper off my roll. This is slightly tacky like a post-it or a sticky note, and I'm going to place it about three quarters of the way up on my tag. This is just going to act as a mask, so when we do our ink blending and stenciling, it won't go any further down than that. To start off, I placed my stencil and I'm going to use the blue ink and just go ahead and stencil right over that area. Now I probably went over with three or four layers of ink before I pulled off the stencil and then using the remaining ink that was on the brush, but leaving the mask in place, I just kind of cleaned off my brush. But what this does, it adds just a little bit of blue where the white areas are that we stenciled. And you can see here the difference between the top and the bottom once it's all done. I continued with the other three tags until all were decorated. To add a little extra texture to the tags, once I had them all stenciled, I used a snowflake embossing folder. Not only does it add that extra texture, but it will help separate the colored image from that white background of the tag. 
The next step was to cut just a little bit off the pieces I just made. I wanted there to be a white border between the decorated tag and the card itself. Now originally I cut 1 8 inch off both sides and then a quarter inch off the bottom. I was afraid if I did an eighth of an inch off the top and bottom it would take away too much of the angle. But in hindsight you should probably just do an eighth of an inch all the way around. I wasn't really sure how I wanted to decorate each tag, so off camera I did complete one, and I'm going to show you how I put it together. Off camera I did have to do a little bit more cutting for my tags, and that was for the whole reinforcers at the top. I used that cable knit pattern paper, and I cut four pieces that were three quarters inch wide by one and a half inches tall. I rounded the corners on that and then folded it in half just so I have a little extra decoration on top. To put one of our little tag cards together, I started by adding the stencil piece to the front of the card and then I added adhesive to the back of the little two and a half by half inch strip of pattern paper and that got placed right at the bottom. I added adhesive to the inside of our hole reinforcer and I just kind of folded that right around the top center of our card. Then to finish this part off, I brought in my We Are Memory Keepers Cropodile and I added a hole as centered as well as I could in the hole reinforcer. Here's a look at it going inside of the envelope. It fits just perfectly and I think it's so cute. I finished the rest of the cards off screen and then it was time for a little more stamping. I will be stamping sentiments on the inside of each tag. I chose four different ones from the set just to have a variety. To ink the sentiments up I am using the same ink as I did for my ink blending and stenciling and between each of the sentiments I did clean off the stamp before moving to the next one. The Misty made this so nice and easy that if I did have to re-stamp everything was right where it should be for that second one. Now let's get those cute little critters put on the card fronts. Off camera I matched up the image with a message inside. Now the only one that was super important was the first one because the inside reads for a dear friend, D-E-E-R, and because that bear looks big and cozy and warm in that sweater, the inside of his says something about warm hugs. I added all four to the fronts with some foam tape, and now to finish these off, I did bring in some just kind of holographic mini sequins. I added three glue dots around each of the images, and then a sequin on top of each of those. I just like that little extra added sparkle. I continued adding bling until all four cards had some and then off camera I removed the label from the crayon box and I used some of the scraps of the cable knit pattern paper to decorate the front. The decorated box makes these so easy to give as little gifts or maybe stocking stuffers to friends, family members, co-workers. You could put them in there in a couple different ways. The first one I show you is where you slip each of the cards into the envelope and put them all in together. But you could also put the envelopes in the back separately from the cards in the front. You can do whichever way you think looks best. Now why don't you let me know in that comment section below if you ever gift sets of cards to your friends, family members, co-workers, etc. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this fun little set of tag shaped note cards with envelopes. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.